Right, hi everyone. Okay, today we're going to do the real basics of watercolour. Uh, and that starts from the paper you use. Uh, the paper you use is important because if you use paper that's too thin, it buckles. However, when you're practising, like we're going to be doing today, just use what you can. Um, if you have something that is a little bit thicker than your regular copy paper, use that. When you get better at watercolour and when you get more um, in control, then you can start ordering the better paper. Another thing that we're going to do is talk about paint brushes. Now the watercolour paint brushes are a lot more, they call, they're, they're, they're more thirsty than any other brush because they, they hold a lot of water and you can tell that they're watercolour brushes if they do bend and if they're softer. Um, there's a test that you can use. This is an acrylic brush. A test that you can use is if you snap it across your finger like that and it snaps back fairly firmly, that's more for acrylic and oil. You can use this for watercolour. That's not a problem. It just takes practice to learn how this one works. For today, I'm going to use a softer, uh, a softer watercolour brush, which will give me a very nice feel with the water. It holds a lot of water and I can get a nice soft finish with it. There's something else there called a hake. This is used for putting a lot of water on your paper at once that you can uh, do a wash, a, a wash across the back of your, your background or blend in uh, your colours in a wet and wet technique. You, you would use this. Um, and then the paints. You can use a cheap, a cheaper student paint. You just have to know how to use it and that also takes practice. You can use a block like this. You can see that's a well-used block as well. You can use something like that. That's absolutely fine. I use tube paint because I get a richer colour on the tube paint and I can get it faster if I'm building up the colour. However, for today, we're going to do a lot more water. So what I'd like you to do, let's do the wet and wet technique first. And I think what we'll do is I'm going to show you that water control actually starts from the very beginning. You learn how to control your water by putting a lot of water in your color. So I'm going to use this nice light yellow color here. And you can see this brush, it holds a lot of water. It holds an awful lot of water. I'm going to use a lot here. Put a lot of water in there. Soak it up on the brush. And then give myself a little corner, a little square of colour with all of that water in. A little square there. And then let it sit. And you can see, you can add more water as well. But you can see these paintbrushes, they hold a lot of water. So that'll sit now. Let's see how that dries. And this is what it's all about. You practice first with your brushes. Then you know the technique that you want to achieve. If you've got too much water on there, say I put too much water on there, you can already see here, there's a bit of color bleed there coming in. I'm going to add some more color into it now so I can make a nice strong color again. And because I've already got edges there, this water, this color will flow to the edge. So I'm just dabbing that color in, it will flow to the edge. Let's use that same water, that same color, but I'm going to add a lot more water now because that's how you make it lighter. You add a lot more water. In acrylics, you would add white. In watercolor, you add water. So let's give ourselves a square there. See how that dries there with a lot more water added to it. And let's do that again. A lot more water added to our colour. Do it again. 
and each time our colour will get lighter. See how that dries. Now you see what's happening here. There's a lot of water in this section here. That is backwash. They call this um, this, a, this is a puddle that is going to cause or it could cause issues when your water dries, when your watercolor dries, because what happens is when there's a puddle and there's um, a lot of water there, the rest of the, the paint in that block is going to dry at a different time. And when it dries at a different time, the water pushes the pigment back into the paint and you get this kind of bloom or a cauliflower effect, backwash. What a lot of artists will do is they can you can either do you can do one or two things. You can take your paper and I'm using a paper towel from the kitchen, not toilet paper because that'll that'll start getting bits and pieces in your in your wash when you've when you use it. It'll leave itself leave traces of itself behind. So you can either use a tiny corner, make a corner of that cloth and pick up, just touch the water, which will pick up. You can see it just soaks up that water, like that. And what that what happens then is it gives the paint enough time to dry uniformly. It takes off that excess water so you're not left with a puddle effect. If you find that you lose control with that and you leave marks with this, another way to do it is to use a brush your paintbrush. Dry it off though. Make it thirsty. And when then it's when it's completely dry, this is a little bit easier to control, you can just touch that brush to the water and you can just see it picks it all up. This brush is dry so it'll pick up water and hold it well. That's what these watercolour brushes are designed for. That's not to say that you can't use a regular acrylic brush or a student brush because that will also work. There we go, and that allows that paint now time to dry uniformly, which should allow it. It all takes a lot of practice. That's what this is about. So you can see the colours are blending lighter as you go as you go add more water to it and get that bleed. Now I want to show you the dry technique. So that's that's a wet technique using lots of water to give yourself a nice wash. That is where this comes in if you're using it on a big background because you can lay down a lot of water first. And in fact, let's do that. Dot your brush. Let's do that. I'm going to paint a square of plain water here. There's a square of plain water in there lots of water in that square with that brush there we go I think I've got enough water there and then add some color to it so let's add some green to this one so let's use some green here add lots of water to my green And I'm going to touch that. And what happens when you touch colour into a water like this, a water block like this, or an area where you've just added water, the, wa the paint will flow to the very edge of the water and no further. And that gives you a nice hard edge. You can see there's a lot of water on there. see what happens with that. So I've just touched that. I am going to lift up this edge here. You can see how it's pooling down. It's This, this paper's not stacked down, so it's buckling a little bit already, which means that my water is going to pool in various areas. That's why you stick your paper down. So I'm going to dry that brush off and then pick up the excess water. Not too much of the excess water, just enough so that you can see what happens with that paint. So try that on yours. Watercolors are trial and and, and um, experimental medium. When I say experimental, you experiment with it until you find that you're happy 
with how it's turning out for you. There we go, let's let that dry. What I'm going to do with my next square, paint a square of water here. There's a bit of green in there still, so I can still see that green. So paint my square of water with this brush. There we go. Add some paint to that. Dab some paint in there. And a little bit more. You can see I'm just dabbing the paint into that water block. But what I'm going to do with this one and there's a lot of water there. You can see there's a lot of water there. With the paint, with the paper buckling, it will start pooling in various areas. But what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to wash the brush off. Get lots of water on it. And now I'm going to add some blue into this green. I want you to see what happens here. Now, some, pa some paint has a different pigment effect to other paints. So this blue here has actually got a quite a hard effect. There's other blues that when they separate like this and start bleeding color into the paint around them or into the water around them, they also separate, the pigment separates. This is all trial and error. You have to actually try and see what effect it gives you. A lot of watercolor is happy accidents that you can turn to your advantage with your own painting. So there we go, let's let, let's let that dry and bleed out. If you want paint and you mix a nice batch of pigment up like this and then try and get it off the brush like that, when you go to your paper there won't be enough paint now or water on this brush to give you a nice finish. What you're going to have is a slight, there's some lines in there. That's because I ran out of paint halfway through. Water is all about how much water you've got on there. So you add a lot of water in so that when you paint your square you don't have those dry lines and you still have the same kind of tonal value to your pigment. See those dry lines that are already appearing there? This one's got a lot of water so you can see there's all sorts of interesting things happening here. Let's see how that's drying there with my streaks. Don't wipe the water off. It's watercolour, you're meant to have the water on. It's actually easier to control lots of water than it is to fix a dry, a dry look like that. If you wanted a dry look like that though. Let's put lots of pigment on the brush. And I've got less water on this brush. I'm going to take the water off. And I'm going to use that brush and just scrape it across the canvas, I mean the paper like that. And there's probably a bit too much water in there still, so let's take a little bit of that water off. And try another dry brush effect here. There you go, dry. See how that leaves? See how that leaves interesting spots in the paper? This can also be used to great effect. Find out what your paintbrush can do. That's this paintbrush. I could then change this to another paintbrush. Let's get another one. What about this one? Nice soft watercolour brush. What kind of effects does this give you? So that's why I say try all your paintbrushes. See what you get out of them. Turning this brush slightly like that, look at the effect that I'm getting there. 
Now I've laid some water down with this and I've put some edges in with that brush. What I can do now is take my big brush again. Since there is water in that lot there and add some more color to it, a different color this time. Let's put a red in there. I want a lot of water on that. A lot of water in there. This brush holds a lot of water. Let's touch that to those just in those blocks there. See what kind of effect we get in that when that dries. Okay, let's add a little bit of other color in there too. Let's put a little bit of yellow. Let's see what happens with that. As I say, watercolor is a lot about accidents. Good accidents. Let's see what happens there. Okay, let's let those dry. Before we head off, I just want to show you one more thing. This is more of an acrylic brush, so it's a little bit snappier. A little bit snappier than a watercolor brush. It holds less water. So when you add water to this brush, when you try and find out how your brushes work, this is the experimental thing. As I pick this up, I can already see that it's got less water than my watercolor brush had. So if I put this down on paper now, let's use a bit more color in there. It's holding less water. Experiment with your brushes and see what they can do. You can see already that it doesn't have the same effect as that because it's holding less water. So to compensate using one of these brushes, I would add a lot more paint to the mix, a lot more pigment. Try and fill the brush up as much as you can so it's holding a lot more water than you even feel comfortable with. And let's paint that in there. So that held a lot more water than I was actually comfortable holding. It almost dripped on my canvas. But you can see the difference already in this on my paper, sorry. You can see the difference already. This has got a few streaks because it didn't hold enough water. It didn't carry the pigment far enough. This one holding a lot more pigment and a lot more water together has created a decent color. See how that dries. And let's try a different color here now. Different brush, different color. You've also got to watch the way that the paper buckles. So my paper's already buckling because it's not stuck down. It is a thick paper. This is a 300 gram paper, so... But you don't have to use anything expensive to do your trial and error. There we go. See how that one works. And let's come back when that's dry. Right. Mine's almost dry. Let's have a look and see this. Look at these interesting effects that I've got here. And you've probably got a lot on, on your side as well. See these beautiful effects here, I will use somewhere in a painting. It's got a little bit of an edge. I can see where the water was um, had already dried, where my brush had used that I used had already dried. So the water that went into it has spread and made these beautiful colors, all my mixture of colors there. My dry and dry technique, this is the darker, lighter washes as we go along, and you can see it's actually easier to control your washes when there's a lot more water, a lot less pigment. That was with our um, acrylic brush, adding a lot of water and a lot of pigment to that acrylic brush and using it sparingly there, using it in that little square there, this was less pigment with that acrylic brush and you can see there's a little bit of backwash coming in here that was also with the that was with the watercolor brush there is a pooling here that's my buckling of the paper these are all my accidents let me have a look and see what this does you have a look at yours this is a cauliflower effect here it's backwashed a little bit into there you can use that 
as a technique in some of your paintings. If you understand how the paint reacts with the water, this was the blend. I've got a little bit of backwash there, but I think that's quite a nice effect that I've got going there. This is not so nice. That puddle is not so nice. Um, that was because the paper has buckled in that corner there, and I can see obviously the paint collected there, and that pushes the pigment away as the water dries there. It dries faster here, and it pushes away and gives you that backwash effect there. Right, moving on from there. So that's experimenting with colour and wet and dry brushes. Your wet and dry brush strokes. Different types of brushes as well, what you can achieve. And then let's move on. Let's go on to a bigger area. It's easier to control the smaller areas with a flat wash than it is to control the bigger area. This is where this nice big brush comes in. If you can get one of these, go for it, do that. Now I'm going to use this brush and wet a nice big area with that brush. And you don't want to put too much water on with this. This watercolour brush holds a lot of water. So don't put too much on, just enough so that your paper is glistening. I can see that's glistening. It might even be a little bit too much. Okay, I'm going to take my big brush, my big watercolour brush, and use a lot of paint now. Let's use a lot of paint, a lot of water in that paint. Get a lot of water on that brush. And in this area that's glistening, just touch my brush, like that, in that area that's glistening there. Bigger area. A lot more pigment there. Let's touch that. Now my paper's already buckling, which I did expect. It's not stuck down at all. In large areas you do want your paper to be stuck down. And you can see how that's bleeding across the edges there too. A little bit more pigment in there. Let's see what kind of effect we get out of that. Let's lay down another line of colour here. and see how this blends. I'm going to use, try a bit more green here, there we go. Green field. This paper that I'm using hasn't got a lot of tooth and that means it's more, it's smooth paper. When you have um, a solid watercolour paper that's got a lot of tooth, you get lots more effect. So this is another thing. Try different papers. So let's just touch that in there. Add more water there. Let it bleed down a little bit. Don't fuss with your paper as well and with your water as well. If you fuss you might remove some of the beautiful effects that the tooth of your paper can give you. So let's leave that, see what happens there. It's a lot of water, it's pooling. And while we're working, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to move to a smaller brush. Still a nice soft it's kind of in between. It's, it, this could be used for acrylics as well. An even softer brush might be worthwhile getting for a watercolour. But I'm going to use this brush. This is a size 8. And I'm just going to show you how you can use this brush on the sides here. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I want to see what the effect it gives me on this paper with this amount of water and touching the colours like that. Let's do some flowers. I think I'm going to do a lilac here. Let's do a lilac. Okay, so what I want is I want to take some purple like this 
and I'm going to use the shape of the brush to give me a petal, which means I'm going to just touch the tip there and then pull it down to give me a little bit of a, an oval shape at the bottom there. I'm going to use that as my lilac petal. Come from this side. So I'm using the shape of the brush. Imagining that the stalk of the lilac is here. Let's put another one there. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the next one. Using the tip there. Maybe make some of the ones in the background a little bit lighter even, so add some more water. My lilac plant. few lighter ones. So I've used the, the brush oh, I've joined that up too much but I've used it, you can see how you're using the, the tip of the brush learning how to use the brush and what your brush strokes can do gives you all sorts of different effects there you go Using the same brush again, I'm now going to use the very tip. Put a little bit of green on that brush. Use the very, very tip. Make sure that you have a tip on that brush. And put a thin stalk in with the tip of the brush. Same brush, I want to put a leaf, a lilac leaf. So I'm going to use the tip of the brush, press down into the body of the brush to get a wider fill, and then pull it up. Let's put some more colour in there so that you can see that. Wider fill using the body of the brush and then pull it up. And that's a leaf. Let's do it on this side here. Thinner. Press a little bit harder. And bring it in. Thin leaf. Learn how to use your brushes to the maximum effect. Let's do another one here. Thin. Fatter. Thin. Another one, thin, fatter, thin. Now if you wanted to do a rose leaf, the amount of pressure that you'd put on your brush there would be thin, fatter, swirled around to thin. That's one side of your rose leaf. Come on the other side here, thin, fatter, swirled around, join it up. And there's a rose leaf. So it's using your brush to good effect, and it's the pressure of the brush. Thin strokes, practice using the tip of the brush to make the thinnest strokes that you can. Practice using them to make them straight, like that. See? Let's do another rose leaf from a point, press it down quite hard, pull it up quick. From a point, press it down quite hard, move into the middle, pull it up quick. And you've got a rose leaf. Smaller, thinner leaves. The smaller, let's just get a lot more colour on that so that you can see what I'm doing there. Touch up. Point, touch up gives you smaller leaves. So it's a matter of controlling your brush. Point, press, up. Thin stalk, grass stalks. Add some brown to that. Put a little bit of a, a wiggle into it.
like that. Using the thinness of the brush and then the thickness of the stroke when you press down and pull a tree up like so. Another cool trick with a tree while we're waiting for this to dry you can see some interesting things are happening there. How's yours looking? See it's all a matter of practice. It's all a matter of trying things out. Let's do something interesting with this tree. So let's put a lot of water. There's a lot of water on my brush and in that stroke there. And what am I going to do is I'm going to take the back of another brush and I'm going to pull a branch, some little twigs, out of that with the back of this brush. There's a lot of water in those branches there, so add some more water, a lot more water into this brush here. Put another branch here with a lot of water in it. Squiggly branch. Take the back end of this one and you can pull a few branches off there. Squiggle some branches off. And they will, as you pull them away, they'll get thinner because the water is now drying. Do you see that? That effect there? Really nice effect, just with the back of the brush. Play with your brushes. Find out how they work for you. So there's a tree there. Let's make another bit of a root coming there. Right, I think that while this is still drying, let's put some flowers on this tree. Autumn flowers. Uh, autumn leaves. So I'm going to make a yellow like that. Lots of water. Let's use the biggest brush. The bigger brush. There we go. This is a size 16. It's got lots of water on it. It's holding lots of water. I'm going to put some leaves on this tree. So that means I'm going to squiggle in autumn tree. Squiggle in some yellow paint like that with this brush. Lots of water. Squiggle some more in here. Go over my branches even. Like that. You can still see there's some sky behind. And while that is still wet, let's take some red as we did with the other with the other canvas. Let's add a bit of red. That's probably a bit too much, so I'm going to add a lot more water there. And it's easier to fix a lot of water, working in a lot of water, than it is to fix dry. So I'm going to pick all this water up now with the cloth. Like that. Use my brush, dry it, make sure it's nice and dry, and pick up the rest. It's quite easy to fix up a lot of water, not easy to fix up too little. Let's put a little bit more red in there. And as I said, experiment with your colors. Less is more. So there I've got a little bit of red. This was a bit too much. So let's add a touch of red in there. Okay. I do also want some green leaves. So let's take some green. Don't be tempted to wash that or get rid of that water. I want to put a bit of green in there too. Especially at the top here. Let's put a few more leaves up there that more green. I 
And then if you want some nice white patches in there, you can literally pick up some spots with your brush as it's drying to create some white. And I think that's all we've got time for today. So what I'm going to do is I want to wait for this to dry. It's getting there. You can see some of the bleeds. There's some interesting things happening here. So I've got a sky here that's coming together that's looking a light, like there's grass across the top here and I've got clouds and a cloud effect in there. Working with a wider area. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that is enough for today. I think go off, go and get yourself some paper, order some paper, order some nice watercolour brushes, specific watercolour brushes. You'll see they are different. You can use the acrylic brush, but practice with it until you have what you want out of it. It's a little bit more difficult, so practice with this until you get what you want out of it. You can see that with the acrylic brush, you can get a decent effect. That's with the watercolour brush. You can get a nice effect. That's a watercolour brush. Different kind of watercolour brush. So yeah, there are ways and means of getting a, of using what you've got. It's all a matter of practice. So go off. Go and order some paper. It doesn't have to be expensive paper as long as it's it's watercolour paper that you can use. And go and try things out. You'll find that you'll get control fairly quickly. And um, we'll see you at the next one.